In a world where values and morals are often compromised, it's crucial to hold on to the timeless principles found in the Bible. Thou shall not steal is a commandment goes beyond just taking physical possessions, but also encompasses the theft of ideas, time and resources. Ho shall not steal is a rule from God that applies to everyone. If you own something, it means that you have a responsibility to both the Bible and to God. Remember that everything you own is a gift from God in the first place. Your home, your car, your business, your possessions, all of it comes from God. He is the original owner of everything on earth. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. David says that the earth belongs to God. Everything on earth is God's property. When you steal from someone, you are stealing from God. Thieves do not go to heaven. It does not matter how good your lawyer is. If you stole something, when you meet God, you will go to hell for it. Zechariah 5 verse 3 says that anyone who steals will be cut off from the community. This includes criminals, congressmen, and corrupt clergymen. America has a problem with people who preach hot tub Christianity. This is when people teach others not to confront their sin, but just to adjust to it. You don't need a counselor, you need to confess and forsake your sin. Then you can get with a counselor. Don't get comfortable with your sin, get it out of your life. If you disobey God, you will never succeed and you will live in misery on earth. This commandment is like a set of rights that every property owner has. Abraham, David, and Solomon all owned huge pieces of land. The children of Israel inherited the promised land. The boundaries for Israel are in the Bible. And even though the enemies of Israel might say otherwise, the land of Israel belongs to the Jewish people today, tomorrow, and forever. In the book, it says that every man's land was exactly marked. This means that people own property and that this is what made them wealthy. God wants you to be prosperous and wealthy, but you have to do it in an honest way. In ancient Rome, there was a group of people who owned nothing and they would go through the streets asking for food. The state provided for them. Just before the gladiators came out to fight, there would be ox carts filled with bread that went around the arena and everyone who came got a loaf of bread. This was socialism on parade in Rome. Today in America, mobs are in the streets burning our cities to the ground. They're shooting at firemen who are fighting the fires they start. They're ambushing policemen. They demand the state rebuild what they have burned down. According to biblical ethics, they have destroyed private property and they should be made to rebuild it brick by brick with their own hands with their own sweet sweat or go to jail. In the Bible, it is required that you replace what you destroy. For example, if you stole a sheep, you would have to replace it with four sheep. If they had a rock concert in your house and destroyed it, you could stone them to death with rocks. This was known as the fourfold replacement policy. Jesus had the same policy. In the story of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was a tax collector and Jesus ran around with some low-class people. Zacchaeus was in the tree because he was short of stature. Jesus was talking with Zacchaeus, who was trying to follow Jesus. Jesus saw Zacchaeus and said that he was coming to his house for lunch today. Jesus had a little chat with him about how he was stealing from people. At the end, Zacchaeus said that he would give half of his goods to the poor and would restore what he had taken from others. The commandment do not take things that do not belong to you. Repudiates communism and socialism. The right of citizens to own private property is God's plan it's a good plan that America was built on. Whenever political people start talking about how they will take your personal property away, you need to stand up and speak up loudly or they will take it. For government to control private property and private enterprise is a socialist pipe dream. Socialism leads to communism and America is walking down that road as fast as we can. Wake up, a miracle is happening. We're going in the wrong direction. Deuteronomy 27 verse 17 says cursed is the one who removes his neighbor's landmark. Every person had their property with a marker. If you attempt to swindle or devalue the property of the owner in any matter, it's theft and in God's kingdom it brings the judgment of God. So how is it in America today? If someone steals your car, it's your fault because you left it parked on the street? You didn't lock it. Lock it or lose it, isn't that the message America today? Up is down, 
right is wrong and wrong is right. Fake news is a problem. People are lying and stealing. God controls everything and he loves us. Jesus gave his life so we could have everlasting life. God created the sun and the ground. The sun gives light and the ground gives nurture to crops. We need to eat to survive. There is a book called The Day America Told the Truth that talks about this issue of employee theft. Some people spend 20% of their time at work goofing off. That means they are only working four days a week, but they are getting paid for five days. Almost half of American workers have called in sick when they were not actually sick. This is stealing from their employer. The Bible says that anyone who steals should stop and instead work hard to earn what they need. Jesus worked with his hands. His father was a carpenter. Joseph, his father, worked with his hands. Jesus chose Peter, James, and John. They were fishermen working with their hands washing their nets when Jesus called them into the ministry. So, let's think about stealing from God. In the Bible, it says that people have stolen from God even though they don't realize it. They do it by not giving God what they owe Him. When people don't give what they owe to God, they are cursed. But if they give what is rightfully God's, then He will bless them more than they can imagine. Would you like to have more blessings than you can imagine? God says that He will give them to you if you do what He commands. Why should we tithe, give 10% of what we make to God? Because the tithe belongs to God. He is the owner of everything, including your money. You are just a steward, someone who manages something that belongs to someone else. The owner has rights and the steward has responsibilities. So, when we tithe, we are not making a deal with God. We are following His command. In Genesis 12, God made a promise to Abraham that would change the world. He promised to give him a land full of resources and abundance, and to make his name great. Even today, Abraham's name is known all over because God never goes back on his word. The Bible says that God controls all the wealth in the world. This means that he is the one who gives us the power to get rich. Haggai 2 verse 8 says that all the gold and silver belong to God. This means that those who have money make the rules. But God is making the rules. 1 Chronicles 29 verse 11 says that everything in heaven and on earth belongs to God. So, we should tithe because he is the one who gives us everything we have. Why should we tithe? Because you become a giver and only givers qualify for the abundance of God. The Bible says it this way, Give and it shall be given to you, how pressed down, shaken together and running over shall God cause men to give to your bosom. Givers gain. That's God's policy. Tithing is your investment in the kingdom of God. The Bible says lay up treasures for yourselves in heaven where thieves can't steal it, moths can't eat it, rust can't destroy it, and the rats can't get to it. Who are those treasures laid up for? Lay up treasures for yourself. The message is invest in things that are permanent and the kingdom of God is the only permanent thing on the universe. Dew drops are as pretty as diamonds in the morning, but they disappear when the sun comes up. If you knew your house was going to burn down today at noon, would you put your possessions in it or would you frantically go and get your possessions out of it? You would do the latter. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. This book clearly says that God, at a time of his choosing in the future after he judges men, is going to burn this earth to a crisp and he's going to create it to look like the Garden of Eden again. So, everything that you think you've given your life for God, the only thing permanent in the universe is the kingdom of God. And when you invest in that kingdom, he brings it back to you 30, 60, 100-fold harvest. The Bible says that if you give up your houses and lands, your parents and siblings, your sons and daughters, for Jesus, you will receive a hundred times more in this life and eternal life in the world to come. A fold is a hundred percent. So, a hundredfold would be ten thousand percent. That's just the beginning. Why should we tithe? Because God says those who don't are thieves. God said it right here in Malachi, Will a man rob God? You have robbed me. But you say, Where have we robbed you? And God comes back with the tithe and offering. You should tithe because it is a way of showing God that you are grateful for what you have. When you tithe, you are giving a portion of your income to the church. This is not for God's benefit, 
but for yours. Tithing is a way of proving to God that you are willing to share what you have with others. When you give, God will bless you and give you more. Jesus said that whatever we ask in his name, he will do it. If that was the only verse in the Bible, Christianity would be the greatest adventure in the world. This was the case for Jesus when he was in Jerusalem. Many people believed in him because of the miracles he did. This could be in your body, your marriage, or your emotions. You might need God to resolve something in your business life so that things can go better for you. The miracle of our nation and spiritual revival is something we all should think about too. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you giving you his peace. May you come to the point that you're willing to accomplish what God has designed specifically for you. May you begin to be led by the Holy Spirit, growing into a new dimension of great faith that you have never known before. Pray that the Holy Spirit will empower you to resolve your problem, to get through your problem, and to receive the provision of God. Pray that you will understand that it takes great faith, obedience, and praise to receive the promises of God. Pray that you will never be the same again as you live your life in obedience and praise to Almighty God. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to help us bring you more Word of God to the world. Here is another sermon you will love. Thank you, and God bless you.